Welcome to each and every one of you. My name is Paul Andrij Rashe. I'm the Archbishop of Gatineau. Usually I would add and Apostolic Administrator of the Diocese of Mont Laurier, but I've been relieved of that duty starting today. Indeed, uh, the Pope announced today that the Bishop of Saint Jerome, Bishop uh, Raymond Poisson, will also become Bishop of Mont Laurier. He is, uh, the Pope is uniting both, bishop, both dioceses in the person of the bishop for right now. So the only thing they share is the bishop. But eventually they will be called to become a new diocese, the two dioceses together to create a new diocese under the leadership of uh, Bishop Poisson. Um, I want to, you know, uh, say to the people of Mont Laurier how much I appreciated my year with you. Uh, getting to know you, getting to appreciate you. Uh, I, I really enjoyed this year, though, though it required a lot of work, eh, and it meant that I kind of was split between two dioceses. Uh, I certainly enjoyed my time with you. And uh, I know that it, this decision of the Pope will not correspond to what the majority of you had expressed, uh, those who were consulted and who spoke to me. Um, but I invite you to receive it in a spirit of unity. Yesterday was the Feast of Pentecost. We saw how much how unity is at the heart uh, of God's will for the church. Uh, and I, I believe you're called to live this unity in a new way. And so I pray that the Spirit will accompany you as uh, you move forward under the leadership of uh, Bishop Poisson. And know that I will keep you in my prayer. And... Uh, and I'm glad to be able to devote myself now more fully to, to this responsibility that remains mine as Archbishop of uh, Gatineau. I will not be commenting on today's readings today. I've decided to end this series. I, I've been doing this now for, well, since mid-March, all of April, all of May. Um, and it's been a wonderful journey and a wonderful experience for me. It's required a lot of work, but what a gift it has been because it's forced me to read, to study, to meditate uh, on the Gospel of John and on the Acts of the Apostles in a way I'd never done before. And in that sense, it really is a blessing. These two texts have become a real source of inspiration for me. I hope they have for you also, for those of you who've been following me daily. They'll all stay on the internet, on the on YouTube. You can find them on the YouTube channel. Just search and you'll be able to find them there. But I'm not disappearing from the net. Somebody suggested that I, uh, I do a little series on the Mass itself, on the parts of the Mass, on, on the words and the gestures that we say and that we do at Mass. We, we do them often through rote and often we haven't had the chance to really explore their meaning. And, and so somebody said, uh, as we're moving towards, you know, uh, unconfinement, you could say, of our living spaces and the opening of our churches and possibly coming together slowly to celebrate the Eucharist, maybe it would be good to reflect on, on the Eucharist and I thought that was a good idea, and I want to do it in a particular way, with a particular focus. When I was at the Synod on the Eucharist uh, in 2005, representing Canada, the theme that Pope John Paul II had chosen for that, for that Synod was the Eucharist, source and summit of the Church's life and mission. And a lot of people will say, well, the Eucharist is the source and the summit of the life of the Church. And they forget and mission. <laughs> How is the Eucharist the source of our mission? And I think that uh, one of the challenges for us as we have the chance to come together again to celebrate the Eucharist is to close in on ourselves. This is the challenge. See, we've been confined, and confined means closed in. Uh, we could go back into our churches and kind of be confined. We gather together and we celebrate the Eucharist together, and it's very beautiful. It, 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 I mean, we, it's, it really is the source of our life as Christians, but it is also the source of our mission. The Mass sends us, and every part of the Mass sends us, and has a meaning for the world, for us, 
as disciples of Christ and trusted with his mission. We've heard so much about mission in, in these past few days as we've read the Acts and as we've read John. So I want to look at the Mass as the source of the Church's mission with you. And so I'm calling it the Unconfined Mass. This will be the title of my series, and I hope you'll, you'll join me. I won't start tomorrow. Um, I'm giving myself a week break. I, I need a, a week of uh, vacation. I haven't had a vacation for a long time, so I'm going to take a, a week and just relax and read a few novels and play a few computer games and practice piano, uh, and I'll pray a bit during that time, and I'll pray for, for you. Uh, but I'll be back and I'll be uh, posting on Facebook and on Twitter uh, the links to the YouTube videos that I'll be doing. They'll be shorter, I promise. I'm planning five minutes maximum each day. Uh, but I think it will help us, all of us, me and you, uh, and those who will join us to uh, understand Mass maybe in a new way, in a deeper way. It's my hope. And with this hope, I bless you and I'll... See you soon. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.